What's up guys, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and today is another continuation of a previous video of mine where we're going through setting up an SQL server using XAMPP. Now of course if you don't know what XAMPP is or how to install it, I'd highly recommend you check out my previous video which was hosting a site off your PC using XAMPP. In the beginning of that video I go through exactly what XAMPP is, what each and every part is as well, how to install it and how to get some basic setup done. It'll be linked down in the description below and assuming that you're on the same screen as me, whether Apache is running or not, we'll continue with the video from here. So assuming that you've got everything set up similarly to how I have it set up, we're going to go ahead and click the config button next to my SQL before starting it up for the first time. So inside of here, we have some settings for my SQL. We can set a server socket and some more things like that. You have some options with the client and the rest of the server down here. You can also install plugins from a plugin directory, etc, etc. At the very bottom, we have some information on the memory that it's allowed, but I'll be leaving everything as default. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and start up the SQL server. After doing that, you won't see much happening, but you can click the admin button next to it to open up PHP my admin. Now that is, of course, if you chose to install it. If you chose not to install this, well, then you're going to have to go ahead and download another piece of software to go ahead and access your SQL database. Basically, from here, you have your whole SQL database running as you'd expect with a couple of sample things here. We have information on SQL performance, PHP my admin, etc, etc. And we won't be deleting any of these top four up here. We have tests down here at the very bottom, which is a test table that you can mess around with and eventually delete if you don't want. You can do that under operations and you have the option to drop the database, which will delete test from your actual SQL database host. Assuming that you don't have PHP my admin installed or you'd prefer to use something else, there is another piece of software that I would highly recommend. And that piece of software is my SQL workbench, which will be linked down below. This piece of software I find to be incredibly useful and all you need to do to download it is to head across to this link in the description down below, hit the download now button and you'll be presented with this page over here. I'll choose Microsoft Windows and down here I'll download the 64 or 32 bit installer and you can hit the no thanks to start my download unless you want to sign in with an Oracle account. Now this is the official download website for this and therefore it's quite trusted. Clicking up the installer, hitting run, you'll see the screen over here. I'll hit next, choose where to install it, next, complete, next, and install. Then I'll wait for it to go ahead and finish. If it needs an administrator, you'll get prompted somewhere roundabouts now. The screen went black because I was prompted, that's copying the last few files and it's done. In the bottom left, I'll make sure that Launch My SQL Workbench is checked and I'll hit Finish. Minimizing the web page, we have this screen over here. So it may be a little bit difficult to figure out. I'll click Rescan Servers and unfortunately, no local servers were found. So I'll have to go ahead and add it manually, clicking the little plus. Over here, we get to change some things. We'll give the connection a name. I'll just call it Local Database Test. We can choose the connection method and down here is where we enter some information. So currently it's hostname 127001, which is localhost, and port 3306. If we refer back to this config file, the port is 3306. And right above it, we have password commented out with equals your password here. Of course, if you want to enable the password, you'll have to get rid of that over there and set a password. However, I'll leave it as is. Minimizing this, I basically have everything set up. The username is root, there is no password, and I'll just hit test connection to see if it's working. Now, of course, this SQL server is running MariaDB, which isn't specifically MySQL, but this workbench does work better than you'd expect. I'll hit continue anyway, and you can see it is working. I'll hit OK, and it'll save it to down here. To connect to it, I'll simply click on it, hit continue anyway, and we're now inside of our server. So in the top left, we have some server status, client connections, things like that and you can monitor your server from here. You can import or export databases, etc., etc., from here. And I just find this to be a lot more powerful than the PHP My Admin page. Down here, we can also monitor performance and things like that. So to actually go ahead and use the actual databases, what do we need to do? Well, down here where it says administration, we'll click schemas next to it, and that shows us all of the databases that are publicly accessible. As you can see, there's only PHP My Admin and Test. And if we have a look inside of our actual PHP My Admin webpage, we see a couple more things. That's because Information Schema, MySQL, and Performance Schema are all under a different user account's permissions. And we shouldn't be editing them anyway, because these are managed by the actual server itself. 
Either way, we can head into test and you'll see tables, views, etc. down here. If we hit the little settings button next to it, we can open up this page over here. We can change some information about it and hitting the little eye next to it brings this page up over here where we can go ahead and add or remove tables, columns, triggers, etc., etc. Under tables, I'll right click anywhere in this window and hit create table. You can go ahead and give the table a name or call it test. And you can go ahead and set up some normal database things. So column one, double click anywhere to edit. I'll just call it ID. I'll leave it as int. And as you can see, it selects primary key and not null as well. And it also marks it as the primary key, which is this little icon on the far left hand side. Of course, to change it, you'd click it down here, primary key, not null, etc., etc. We can go ahead and add a bunch of other things, other things, hitting enter to add them. Of course, you can change the type, etc., etc., unique, and the rest of the things you would normally do. Now, of course, at this point, nothing has actually been added to the server. We need to hit apply for it to add it to the server. So we'll hit apply to run this command, and the script was executed successfully. On the extreme left side, you see the new test table underneath the tables list over here. So if we hit the far right hand corner where this little icon is, we can go ahead and explore the actual table. So select star from test dot test, and we can go ahead and add columns by simply double clicking and entering some information. So I'll just say some tab info. And of course, to add some information, you simply just double click and type in some information. Other test information. It's as simple as that. Of course, you can drag and drop to expand these columns. And in the bottom right, you can click apply. It'll give you what commands it'll run, apply again, and it'll try and add it to the server. Now, of course, because I haven't set an ID for either of these, it says duplicate entry zero for key primary. So I'll enter ID zero, one, and I'll hit apply. Apply, and it was successfully added to the server. And you'll be left on the screen over here. Now, of course, you can run commands up here, type them in and hit the lightning button to actually run it on the server. And that's basically as simple as it gets. This is super simplified and really easy to use. And of course, if you'd like to practice your SQL database skills, here is a better place than any. Even down here, it gives you some error information on things that might be going wrong. Anyways, that's about it. This is a super simple crash course to getting an SQL database working on your PC and interfacing with it using either PHP My Admin or this MySQL Workbench. Anyways, that's about it. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Technobo here for Troubleshoot. I hope this video helped you, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.